Greetings to everyone. Here is my uh, weekly uh, spiritual supplement. This time I have my friend, uh, the seminarian Egon, who will be my producer for this uh, spiritual supplement. To be a human is to be experience fear. There seems to be uh, no limits to our fears. Sometimes we feel like we are afraid of everything. We are afraid of ourselves, we are afraid of people, we are afraid of the future, we are afraid of the past, we are afraid of life, we are afraid of death. Every person must fight their own fears. But perhaps the most surprising fear of many people is to fear of God. It is the fear that God is not really on our side. It is the fear that in the midst of the storm we will be alone. It is not a new idea. One of the great fears of the ancient people was that God would fall asleep, for example. So can you imagine such a thing? When the prophets of Baal could not get their gods to rain down fire on the top of the mountain Carmel, Elijah mocked them, saying, maybe your God is asleep, he said. Over and over again, the message of the Bible is fear not. For example, when, when Abraham took his family to the promised land, he feared that he was turning his back on everything he knew, his security for the unknown. God spoke to him, fear not Abraham, I am your shield and your reward will be great. When the Jews stood at the Red Sea and could see Pharaoh's chariots coming on the horizon, they cried out that they would be slaughtered. Moses said to them, Stand still, fear not, and see the salvation of the Lord. Or when the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said that she would bear a child, she trembled with fear. And the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor in God. First, I would say to you that we must uh, confront our fears. We pay a price when we don't deal with our fears. For example, Simon Peter is out in the boat, crossing the lake of Galilee after a long day with the crowds. Earlier that day, uh, he saw Jesus take the bread and fish and fed 5,000 men. Now, he is stepping out of the boat into the storm, trying to imitate his master, walking on the water. He is successful for a moment, but fear rises and his body sinks. Over and over again, the message of the Bible is clear. Fear not, fear not. Over 70 times this is mentioned in scripture more than any other human emotion. Did you realize that? So if you have your fears, you are not alone, trust me. Paul writing to the young disciple Timothy said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Once we have grasped this most basic understanding, then we can go about dealing with our fears. That is the first step, confronting our fears, seeing that they are there and putting in their place the Spirit of God who replaces them with a sound of mind of love and power. We are not powerless in the midst of the storm. We have the Spirit at our side. I can hear God whispering in the Peter's ear, letting your imagination magnify your fears. The storm is furious, but I am greater still. 
So first, we must confront our fears, walk out of the boat to Christ. And second, we must understand that too much doubt can sink us. Peter, you can't do that, Jesus saying, and he walks on the water towards to him. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, you can make me to walk on the water with you. Do you see that? Peter's walk on the lake is not the point. The point is he wants to confirm that this ghost on the water is Jesus. Jesus can make him walk. A ghost will only make him wet. Peter knows that the Lord can sustain us, even in the midst of the storm, when there is nothing but uncertainty. He will take care of you, but I want you to know that faith is a risk-taking enterprise. It does not come in the perfect package. He doubts his walk, he fears the storm, and he falls under the waves. We can learn from Peter's story is to come to Jesus even if we are in the middle of a storm. Life has its storms, doesn't it? How do you respond to the storm? If we sink, if we take our gaze off of Christ, we can call on our Savior and His grace will pull us through. The final thing we can learn from uh, them, from uh, Peter's story, is to not let anything stand between ourselves and Jesus. Notice that Peter almost made it. He took the first few baby steps of faith, and then he let fear and circumstances overwhelm him. Think for a moment. What does Jesus have in store for you if you commit your whole life completely to him? What is holding your back? I don't know what storm of life will come your way this week or what storm you may be enduring at this very moment. But I know this, even as a storm rages around you, if you will listen very carefully with your heart, you will hear a gentle voice calling to you, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And in time the storm will pass, and Jesus will still be there. Secondly, uh, we must remember that uh, regardless of what happens, God will be with us. The psalmist says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Well, let me ask you, where else are you going to go? If the market drops tomorrow dramatically, if the news is bad, God is still going to be the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God does not change. If you get a bad medical report, where are you going to go? If your relationship is broken, God is going to be the same. Nothing has truly really changed. How do we overcome that ultimate fear? By faith. It is the only narrative that will exercise the demons of fear that can bother us. I think it is telling that when Peter stepped out onto the lake, walked on the water, became terrified and started to sink, Jesus later asked him why he doubted. Why didn't his faith carry him across the water to Jesus' side? It's what it was, his fear. Fear crept in and doubt began to rise and Peter began to sink. It is the story of our life, isn't it? In the boat we are safe, but we uh, on occasion are willing to brave the storm and walk on water and do uh, this impossible 
through our faith. It is then we suddenly realize the wind is in our face and the storm is raging. It causes fear and doubt creeps. Our faith is fragile, isn't it? Enthusiasm is not enough in serving God. Proper posture in prayer is the key to a strong faith. In life, there are storms, but God is with us. So I want you to know that God cares if you are immobilized by some fear in your life. Every faith journey, no matter how rocky, begins with getting out of the boat and walking toward Jesus. Are you ready to take the step, even if it's a baby step like Peter's? Jesus is waiting for you. Have a safe journey and God bless you.